Are you having trouble losing weight? I've been there. It is so frustrating. And today I'm going to share the three most common reasons why maybe you've been losing weight, even though you have PCOS and it has stopped or has actually gone backwards and you're gaining the weight back. Now, um, first of all, PCOS makes it hard to lose weight. So that's one reason, but I'm going to go into a three specific reasons that you can actually do something about. So number one is that your metabolism is slowing down because you are losing metabolically active mass. Number two is you are experiencing hormonal havoc because of your chronic sleep deprivation. And number three, is you have a problem with weekend or nighttime overeating. I have been a coach and personal trainer to women living with PCOS for a long time. I think like six, well, since 2009, whatever the math is on that. And I can tell you with relative certainty that it's highly likely that one of these things is impacting, if not all of them, your weight loss plateau. Okay, so let's get into it. Number one was you're losing metabolically active mass and it's slowing down your metabolism. Okay, so um, I'm going to read you an Instagram quote from one of my favorite exercise physiologists because I think it um, perfectly sums up a problem that we face as women with PCOS. Now he wrote this about the general population, but it still holds true. In many diet strategies, 25% or more of weight loss comes from lean mass. So that means you're losing about 25% of your pounds are coming off of your muscle tissue. Not only is this detrimental to both physical function and appearance, but it actually has negative effects on fat accumulation over the long term. Here's the issue. Lean mass is essential to survival. When you lose lean mass, the body thus perceives it as a threat to its survival and overcompensates by increasing hunger and reducing your metabolic rate in an attempt to restore your lean mass. Ultimately, these alterations in these factors persist so that additional fat mass is gained over and above what you lost before dieting. Okay. That was a quote from Brad Schoenfield, PhD's um, Instagram. And so now I'm gonna explain that to you in some simpler terms. So basically, as you diet down, if you're not lifting weights or strength training adequately, you're going to um, continue to lose muscle mass. And that means that your metabolism, the amount of calories you need every day to sustain yourself is going to continually get lower. So you're going to have to continually make a bigger and bigger caloric deficit in order to continue losing weight. So that's the first thing is you're backing yourself up into a corner. And so you're having to work out more and eat less and work out more and eat less just to continue to lose fat. Now let's add this piece he talks about, which is basically your survival mechanisms and your body kicking in. And this is a complex cascade of hormonal um, things that happen, but here's what you need to know. PCOS is largely considered by geneticists, epigenetic people, um, to be like a survivor gene. So that we actually, the reason why this is such a common um, condition, one theory is, is because um, it was actually really helpful uh, a long time ago in times of famine to help women survive. That's really cool. That's really interesting, but it kind of sucks for you right now, right? Because you're trying to lose weight. So basically, if you are dieting down and you are not restoring your lean tissue and preserving it through strength training, your super powerful genetically programmed survival mechanism is going, oh my gosh, something is really wrong. We've got to do everything we can in our body to slow down weight loss because we're losing muscle tissue and the body doesn't want to lose that because it's a threat to your survival under normal circumstances. I mean, modern, the modern world hasn't been around that long. So your body starts to change the way it responds to the same things you were doing before to lose weight. And my theory is, is because you have PCOS and you have a superwoman gene, kind of works against you. It would be great if you needed it to survive out 
in um, some sort of precarious situation out there. But um, if you're not living in a time of famine or food scarcity, and I hope to God you're not, um, these genes work against you managing your weight. Okay, so the solution, real simple. Just mix in some strength training into your weight loss program. And if you look in the comments below in this video, I will um, link to my free strength training guide. And I'll also link to a video about um, exercise and PCOS weight loss right here. Deek, deek. Okay. Um, so number two, sleep deprivation. I think that a lot of people, especially those of us with PCOS, really underestimate how terrible sleep deprivation is for weight loss. First of all, there's been a multitude of studies, and I'll link to one below, that show that um, just even some mild short-term sleep deprivation, like just getting five hours every once in a while instead of seven or eight, causes you to have a spike in your insulin resistance. And of course, we know that's one of the underlying factors of why it's difficult to lose weight with PCOS and easy to gain weight with PCOS. So um, if you are just slightly sleep deprived on a regular basis, or you go through these spikes where maybe you stay up all night for work or just to watch Netflix or to have fun, um, you could be really screwing up um, your, ins you know, your ability to manage your insulin response. And this is something that every woman with PCOS needs to keep an eye on because it's something you're at risk for. Also, uh, there have been a multitude of studies that say when you are sleep deprived, you tend to eat more the next day. Um, they're not quite sure why this is, but it's real. Um, I know it's real because I just got through raising a newborn <laughs> not too long ago. And sometimes I would wake up from a terrible night where he woke me up many, many times. And I was like, you know, I need a brownie for breakfast. It's like, I never think like that. It's because of sleep deprivation. And I have to say, hold on, you need a nap. You don't need carbs. And so, um, sometimes just getting better sleep. And knowing the difference between sleep deprivation and hunger when you are forced into a situation where you have sleep deprivation can be extremely helpful to losing weight. Now, number three, this is a big, complex problem, um, and I'm just going to touch on it quickly here, and that's nighttime or weekend overeating. And um, this is something that has largely to do with the kind of personality you have, um, whether you're the kind of person who needs to have flexibility and moderation in their diet, or they're a hardline abstainer. Some people, and they tend to be in the minority, very few people are like this, can just be like, I'm going to eat a perfect diet. I don't need any exceptions. I can make myself do this. And they can go on with their life. You know, they don't have a lot of like <sighs> mental turmoil, a lot of backsliding. That's not most people. Most people need flexibility and moderation in what they choose to eat, even when they're trying to lose weight, because otherwise this is what they do. Monday through Friday, <clears throat> they're brilliant. They're great at weight loss. <clears throat> and then Friday rolls around and they feel like they can relax finally. The tension mental exhaustion of constantly eating perfect it's finally gotten to them and they're going to cut back because it's the weekend and you should relax and i agree with that but what happens you overeat and it doesn't take much overeating to completely wipe out your gains or your losses from the five days before and so you're in the cycle of losing maybe even a whole pound in five days and gaining half a pound back or even the whole pound in a weekend. That's very, very easy to do, especially if you have PCOS. So what's the solution? Um, I think that it's to really start to think about why you're eating, especially if you find that like late at night or the weekends or the time when you overeat, sit down and go, is this hunger or am I just thinking about food because I need an escape from stress? Um, I need to find something interesting to do with my life. I feel like I deserve something fun and you deserve all of those things. So if you are eating for any reason other than hunger, especially over the weekends, um, you want to start looking for ways to fulfill those emotional needs another way. Examples would be actually planning something fun to do on the weekends, you know, not just like filling it with chores and like do it yourself projects at your house, unless you love that. Um, 
and also you know just think just kind of realizing the difference between thinking about food and being hungry i can think about pizza all day that does not mean i'm hungry and it does not mean i need to eat a piece of pizza for example now i can be hungry and that's a physical sensation that's not a thought right so there's a difference there and i think the other thing to do is to stop trying to be perfect give yourself permission to just be good enough so a lot of times just good enough is you know you want to define that for yourself but a big part of that is just eating when you're hungry and stopping when you're full and then of course as you develop more skills choosing more nutritious options whenever possible and sometimes allowing yourself the opportunity to enjoy something less nutritious but you still don't have to eat it past stuff because it's not the last time you're ever going to have your favorite pasta dish, your favorite cake, whatever. Okay. So I hope that gives you uh, three things to look at. Again, that was losing uh, metabolic gains because you're not strength training. Number two, you're not sleeping enough. And no matter what you try until you get your sleep right, you're not going to lose weight. And three, you've got a little weekend or nighttime overeating problem that you just need to get honest about and address. Subscribe to my channel if you want more tips on exercise, PCOS, weight loss, and living an awesome life, even if you do have PCOS.